Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about acoustic neuromas. Coming up. Given that nearly 75% of our communication on a day-to-day -day basis is verbal, hearing is an extremely vital sense. But communication isn't the only thing that hearing offers. From the sweet melodies of your favorite song to the laughter of a dear friend, hearing is what connects us to our world. Hearing is a very complex sensory process that involves the detection, transmission, and interpretation of sound waves from the ears all the way up to the brain. But as with any system in the body, there's always the potential for something to go wrong with the ears, resulting in hearing loss. Hearing loss is often caused or accelerated by aging, repeated loud noise exposure, genetic disorders, and several medical conditions. But in rare instances, hearing loss can even be caused by a brain tumor called an acoustic neuroma. An acoustic neuroma, also known as a vestibular schwannoma, is a non-cancerous tumor located on the vestibulocochlear nerve, which is your eighth cranial nerve. Technically, the vestibulocochlear nerve is a combination of the vestibular nerve that connects to the semicircular canals that control balance, and the cochlear nerve that connects to the cochlea, your hearing organ. The vestibulocochlear nerve is responsible for transmitting hearing and balance signals from the inner ear to the brain for processing. The outer layer of this nerve is comprised of Schwann cells that provide insulation and supply nutrients to individual nerve fibers. A vestibular schwannoma or an acoustic neuroma develops due to an abnormal overproduction of these Schwann cells. This results in unwanted pressure being placed on the nerve, causing a blockage of nerve signals from the inner ear to the brain. While your inner ear and your brain could be working just fine independently, the auditory nerve that forms a connection between the two could be partially or fully blocked by an auditory nerve tumor. This tumor can impact both the volume and the clarity of the signals being sent from the inner ear up to the brain, causing hearing loss, tinnitus, and even vertigo. Acoustic neuromas are often slow growing, generally only affect one ear, and are relatively rare, affecting only about one in a hundred thousand people per year. While they can occur at any age, acoustic neuromas are generally diagnosed between the ages of 30 and 60, and at a slightly higher rate in women. They often occur sporadically, but in rare instances, they can be the result of a genetic disorder called neurofibromatosis type 2. This condition is characterized by the development of benign tumors on many different cranial and spinal nerves. However, the most common tumor development and the first noticed for many people are auditory nerve tumors affecting both ears. Currently, acoustic neuromas account for somewhere between 6 to 8% of all primary brain tumors. However, these estimates are likely a bit low, given that many people experience symptoms so mild they never even get diagnosed. Symptoms of an acoustic neuroma are different from person to person but often include varying degrees of hearing loss and tinnitus in one of your ears, and even vertigo. These symptoms are often very gradual, and unilateral hearing loss is the initial symptom in 90% of cases. These symptoms should never be ignored and require an urgent evaluation by an audiologist to avoid the serious negative consequences of non-treatment. This can include hearing loss, tinnitus, and balance issues, but in more severe cases, tumor growth can cause facial weakness and numbness, vision problems, and headaches. Additionally, the unmonitored growth of a tumor can allow it to reach a larger size, making surgical removal challenging and increasing the risk of complications, and in extremely rare instances, can even become life-threatening. But before I tell you just how an acoustic neuroma is diagnosed, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up to bring videos like these to a wider audience. And if you like what you see, make sure that you hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Now, diagnosis of a tumor on your vestibulocochlear nerve begins with a comprehensive hearing evaluation. During this testing, your hearing healthcare provider is looking for some key red flags. The first being asymmetrical sensory neural hearing loss. This is defined as a difference of 15 decibels or more between the right and left ears at three adjacent frequencies. And oftentimes, the higher frequencies are the ones that are affected first. In most cases, hearing loss develops symmetrically between both of your ears. 
So having one ear that hears much worse than the other ear, that's a clear red flag. The second red flag is a difference of 15% or more in word recognition scores between the right and left ear. The goal of word recognition testing, also known as speech discrimination testing, is to assess your ability to comprehend spoken words. This helps your audiologist identify not only if you can detect sounds, but just how clearly you can understand them. Poor word recognition abilities suggest significant damage in the cochlea, your hearing organ, or a problem further along the auditory neural pathway that can negatively impact the clarity of the message being sent to the brain. The third red flag is word recognition scores that worsen as the volume is increased, called rollover. Pressure from a tumor can compress the auditory nerve, resulting in abnormal loudness perception. Testing word recognition ability at several different volume levels allows your hearing healthcare provider to calculate a rollover ratio. For example, if you scored 64% correct with a presentation level of 70 decibels, but only 32% correct at 90 decibels, the rollover ratio would be 0.5. It is considered a clinically significant finding when the rollover ratio goes above 0.45. This ratio is examined alongside all of the other test results in order to determine the significance of the findings and can lead to the need for additional testing. One such test is called an auditory brainstem response, a diagnostic procedure that measures electrical activity of the auditory nerve and the brainstem in response to sounds. Abnormal findings during a comprehensive hearing evaluation and or auditory brainstem response testing should result in a referral to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. An ENT physician is able to order magnetic resonance imaging, commonly known as an MRI, the primary tool used to definitively diagnose an acoustic neuroma. This imaging technique provides detailed images of the internal auditory canal and can help determine the presence, size, and location of an acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma. Treatment for an auditory nerve tumor is dependent on many factors, including the severity of your symptoms, the size and location of the tumor, and your overall health. The recommendation for small tumors with relatively mild symptoms is often to watch and wait. This generally involves completing regular audiometry to look for significant changes in hearing and MRI monitoring to track tumor growth when significant changes are observed. With larger tumors and more severe symptoms, surgery may be recommended to avoid dangerous buildup of fluid in the brain or life-threatening compression of the brainstem. If you are not a great candidate for surgery, concentrated radiation, like is used with CyberKnife radiotherapy, is used to slow or stop tumor growth. Unfortunately, the likely outcome of reducing or removing the tumor through surgery or radiation is the total loss of hearing in that ear, resulting in single-sided deafness. Regardless of medical intervention, hearing aids are almost always needed to treat hearing loss before and after any surgery or radiation. In most cases, traditional hearing aids can address hearing loss caused by an acoustic neuroma. However, in more severe cases, the damage from tumor growth or surgical removal is so significant that a hearing aid will provide little to no benefit when used in the affected ear. In these cases, you may be better served by a cross transmitter that can transfer sound from your bad ear to your good ear. CROSS, which stands for contralateral routing of signal, is a hearing aid solution designed for individuals with single-sided deafness. A CROSS system consists of two devices. A microphone transmitter is worn on your deaf ear, capturing sounds coming from that side. These sounds are then wirelessly transmitted to a hearing aid worn on the better ear. The hearing aid on the better ear processes and amplifies the signal allowing you to hear sounds coming from either side of the head. In the event that your better ear also has some level of hearing loss as well, a cross system can be set up in bi-cross mode to apply additional amplification and overcome the hearing loss on that side as well. Unfortunately, a cochlear implant is not a good treatment option for single-sided deafness as the result of an acoustic neuroma. This is because the goal of a cochlear implant is to bypass the damaged cochlea and stimulate the auditory nerve directly. However, in the case of an acoustic neuroma or a vestibular schwannoma, the cochlea is not the issue. It's the auditory nerve that takes the signal from the cochlea to the brain 
That's the issue. In some cases, a very rare surgical solution called an auditory brainstem implant can be used to bypass the cochlea and the auditory nerve, stimulating the brainstem directly. During surgery, electrodes are placed into the cochlear nucleus of the auditory brainstem. Using an ear-worn speech processor, similar to cochlear implants, sound is collected, processed, and transmitted to the auditory brainstem implant and eventually the auditory cortex in the brain. As you've probably gathered, treating hearing loss from an acoustic neuroma or a vestibular schwannoma is not only complex, but can progress or change with passing time and medical intervention. Treating this cause of hearing loss effectively requires frequent monitoring, consistent follow-up care, and special attention to the unique needs of this patient population. Finding a hearing healthcare provider who follows comprehensive best practices is critical for achieving the best possible outcomes from hearing treatment. Overall, the treatment of auditory nerve tumors often requires a team approach of neurotologists, radiation oncologists, audiologists, and even physical therapists. A care team can analyze the benefits, risks, and outcomes of each treatment option depending on your own unique needs and circumstances. The primary goal of all intervention will always be maximizing the positive benefits of treatment while minimizing the negative impacts on your quality of life. If you or someone you love is experiencing hearing loss, tinnitus, or vertigo, especially that is more noticeable in one ear than the other, be sure to schedule a comprehensive hearing evaluation straight away. While acoustic neuromas and vestibular schwannomas are rare and generally well-managed with MRI monitoring and hearing treatment, they are still brain tumors after all, and definitely something you don't want to ignore.